restrictive lung disease in the sense as the name suggests restrictive the function of the or the size everything has been restricted okay due to various etiologies and commonly we will call it as an pneumoconiosis for this disease we will call it as pneumoconiosis pneumoconiosis in the sense the persons who are working in a coal factories the individuals who are working in a factories okay for example a person who is working in a, a mining okay so as a period of time for almost for 5 years or 10 years he will be going on engulfing those materials and it will go straight away to the trachea goes to the lung it gets uh, sediment over there over a period of time what happens it gets sedimented and it causes an restrictive lung disease this is the topic what we are going to discuss so coming to this uh, pneumoconiosis first one is uh, it's uh, defined as the non neoplastic reaction of uh, of the lung to inhaled mineral or organic dust in the sense uh, the uh, inhaled products of minerals are organic dust sometimes it causes here i mentioned as non neoplastic but sometimes what it happens after engulfing those materials uh, over a period of time it may end up with any tumor okay like bronchogenic carcinoma next is the reaction of the lung will vary with depending upon this mineral organic dust it depends upon the properties of the dust whether it's a fibrogenic or inert material size of the inspired particles length of exposure and individual susceptibility in the sense individual how much individual having the capacity to prevent it or to sustain it length of the exposure whether it's a 2 years 3 years or 10 years size of the particle whether it's a small size or large size always the large size we will through the cough we will spit it out only the small size particles very very minute particles which unknowingly we will be uh, inhaling it and it will go to the uh, trachea as well as in the lung and get sediment over there the small particles are more dangerous than the large particles next why it is yellow light why the yeah the projector is uh, bad okay fine uh, this is okay for the microscopy it will be tough okay these are the minerals various minerals inducing the lung disease such as uh, coal dust silica asbestosis those individuals who are working in silica factory asbestos factory and coal dust what is asbestos we have here asbestos right buildings. yes for all the building from the roof right we have asbestos sheet we we'll call it as asbestos those individuals who are preparing those asbestos sheets for a period of time they will be known as the, the disease <coughs> for those individuals we we'll call it as asbestosis in this disease for the example coal dust it is a simple coal workers pneumoconiosis a um, patient will have an uh, macules and nodules in the lung sometimes these are the various uh, uh, terminologies like co complicated coal workers pneumoconiosis and then pulmonary massive fibrosis the exposure is coal mining silicosis is the disease who are working in sand blasting quarrying mining stone cutting foundry work and ceramics you know it very well right this is silica we are constructing the buildings okay then asbestos and the asbestosis the exposure to mining uh, milling fabrication of woods and materials installation and removal of removal of inst uh, insulation so the, those individuals will have an asbestosis or a mesothelioma uh, those individuals will have an a carcinoma lung as well as larynx first we will go for one by one like coal worker pneumoconiosis then silicosis then asbestosis coming to the coal worker pneumoconiosis we'll one by one we'll go like pathogenesis types morphology gross and microscopic then clinical features this is the pathogenesis as a pathogenesis shows you this is the alveoli this is a terminal bronchiole okay we will have a respiratory bronchiole terminal bronchiole alveoli in this alveoli what you are seeing is a type 1 pneumocyte and type 2 pneumocyte here this is the alveolar macrophage when you are when an individual is uh, inhaling any mining any particle any small particle which this uh, macrophage is having the function of engulfing those particles after engulfing it uh, having an uh, uh, effect of a toxic factors such as proteases oxygen free radicals apart from that neutrophil also having the same property as proteases this what up in uh, what happens up, uh, after some period of time it having an effect on a fibrogenic factors this is it doesn't happen all of a sudden it takes place minimum 3 years 5 years or 10 years okay it depends upon the individual susceptibility then it it, uh, it induces this uh, cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha platelet growth factor 
IgF factor 1 and fibronectin, it acts on the muscle and it causes recruitment of the fibroblast and collagen production, it causes fibrosis. Here, the pro-inflammatory factors such as IL, uh, interleukin 8, 6, tumor necrosis factor alpha and uh, MEP1 alpha, it causes recruitment of this neutrophil and the monocyte in that it releases this uh, toxic factors and it causes fibrosis. All of a whole, whenever the particle, mining particle, when it is engulfed and it goes to the trachea, goes to the lung, it is been, when it is going to the lung, what happens is alveolar macrophages, the macrophage which will present in the lung is alveolar macrophage, try to engulf that. Okay. Initially, small, small particles, it can able to go apoptosis, it will be released out. When it is in a large amount, in a over a period of time, it recruit neutrophils, it is having an effect on toxic factors, okay. it releases proteases, okay. it releases, it acts on the muscles, over a period of time, this combined, it forms a fibrosis. Okay? That's what it is. Yes. Uh, all, all kind of particles are going to drop process? Yes, yes. Mo mostly the minute particles, very small particles. Large particles will, through the cough, it will come out. Like dust and silica? Yeah, yeah, minute dust, ma mainly the dust particles, very minute dust particles. And silica? Silica. The persons who are being exposed to silica will be having silicosis. A uh, cold worker pneumoconiosis, initially patient will have asymptomatic uh, when he is working for only for few years. Sometimes he working for more than 5 years or 10 years, he will have the disease known as anthracosis, then simple cold worker pneumoconiosis, then complicated, he will land up with anthracosis, then he will land up with simple cold worker pneumoconiosis, then complicated cold worker pneumoconiosis, then lastly pulmonary massive fibrosis. So all the times end up with fibrosis? Yes, the last stage is fibrosis. Fibrosis in the sense fibrosed. As the heading is restrictive lung disease. So this fibrosis, it causes restriction of the lung. Here what you are saying, this is the alveoli. One single alveoli. This is the another alveoli. This is the another alveoli. In this alveoli, what you are seeing in the center, this is the particles. This is the carbon particles. How these carbon particles are there means whenever the carbon particles enter into the alveoli, this macrophage will engulf these carbon particles. We will call this carbon laden macrophages. Then simple cold worker pneumoconiosis in the sense patient will have a cold macules and cold nodules. This is the uh, feature you will see in the lung. Okay? I will show you next picture. Mostly patient will be affected by upper lobe and upper part of the lower lobe is affected. Coal macule is a dust laden macrophages, coal nodule is a small amount of collagen fibers arrayed in a delicate network. What you are seeing it here, this is the whole lung, this is a emphysema, emphysema you know it very well, abnormal dilatation of the alveoli, okay, we will see in the next classes, this is emphysema, this is the whole lung, what you are seeing, this is the coal particles. Initially if it is for few years, it will be one, oh, here and there you will see. A period of time after 10 years, you'll be having a large amount of coal particles. This is the coal particles here. Massive black deposits of the smaller nodules. You can see massive black deposits here. What happens after miss anthracosis? Just a deposit of the coal uh, coal particles, uh, uh, macrophages engulfing the coal particles. We'll call it as anthracosis. Then he'll land up with a simple coal worker. Then he'll go for an uh, complicated. Then he'll go for massive fibrosis. This massive fibrosis, after a period of time, what happens? Restriction now, totally restricted. Then it undergoes destruction. Necrosis will take place. It, it causes a decrease in lung capacity. Yes, everything. After that, it will be patiently, uh, he can't able to breathe. He'll be having complete, dis miss almost 80% uh, dyspnea like that. He can't able to get up also from the, even in the bed rest also, he'll have uh, dyspnea. Then you, what you are saying, this is the hyperview, hyperview showing the slightly magnified detail of the showing lung indurated cold nodule. This is the cold nodule. It's a cold nodule. This is the feature of a simple cold worker pneumoconiosis. Okay, this is the one. Uh, this is the microscopic picture. This is the whole lung specimen. This is the microscopic picture. This is an alveoli. This is an alveoli. What you are saying, this is the cold particles here. Next, land up with progressive massive fibrosis. This is the whole lung. This is the, what you are seeing, a pleura here. The whole lung in the center, what you are seeing is a dense fibrotic tissue. 
the here it is showing an a simple co-worker pneumoconiosis in the sense initially patient started with anthracosis later end up with a simple co-worker pneumoconiosis then lastly five, five, pulmonary, five, uh, pulmonary massive fibrosis what happens here in this stage it is still, still simple co-worker after some time this also will have a massive fibrosis so complicated then yes this is the one pro progressive massive fibrosis this how the lung you have seen the x-ray right x-ray of the lung see the x-ray of the lung it is so totally fibrous whitish in layer it is no function at all only these upper parts having little bit of function here so this is a how, how do you manage these people like how to breathe uh, mostly you should pay prevention is stop uh, asking make the individual not working in this uh, factories first of all second thing is that uh, uh, if it is an, uh, uh, depending upon the severity of the disease, if it is uh, less, then you can give him an, a kind of an, uh, if it is having any kind of infection or else uh, uh, in for the infection, That's mostly right. the, just to give him an uh, right. antibiotic and uh, give him an, an uh, exercise, respiratory exercise, so that his lung capacity can improve and he can able to breathe, uh, breathe properly and he can able to uh, remove out those cold particles through the macrophage and through the circulation. And uh, if it is on a massive one, you have to undergo on a lung transplantation. Lung transplant. Progressive mass fibrosis has come after the cold. Last one. What you are seeing it here, progressive massive fibrosis showing in a cold. Uh, large amount of black pigment is associated with fibrosis totally it is fibrosed here see this is alveoli this is alveoli these are all the way this is totally it is fibrosed here this is not the normal picture of an uh, uh, lung in lung you will see full of alveoli everywhere you will see alveoli alveoli septa separated by septa okay only you are seeing here some some three percentage remaining 90 percentage is full of fibrosis fibrosis collagenous material then we'll go for clinical condition like an uh, co-worker pneumoconiosis. It will be it, usually it is benign. Sometimes patient will have an uh, tuberculosis associated with the tuberculosis. Pulmonary massive fibrosis. Patient will have an a uh, pulmonary hypertension and car pulmonale. Uh, this no predisposition to cancer. Next we'll go for silicosis. Silicosis again we'll see pathogenesis, morphology, and clinical features. Silicosis in the sense those individuals who are working in the silica factory. Uh, the most prevalent uh, chronic occupational disease in the world. It is caused by inhalation of crystalline silica. Quartz is the most commonly implicated in silicosis. Quartz is a material, ma ma small minute particles, which is affected more by the patients. Pathogenesis is after inhalation of the particle, uh, interact with the epithelial cells, this is the type pneumocytes as well as the macrophages. These particles causes activation of mediators, uh, the pulmonary mediators as, uh, by the pulmonary macrophage, including interleukin-1 tumor necrosis factor, fibronectin, lipid mediators, oxygen-derived free radicals, and fibrogenic cytokines. What does mean? Either in a cold worker, cold worker pneumoconiosis or silica or else asbestosis, whenever the particles entering inside, this macrophage will try to engulf that and it causes, it mediates the inflammatory action. This inflammatory action, what happens? It causes uh, a fibrogenic reaction at a period of time. This is a common etiology for everything. What you are seeing here, this is the, this arrow mark, this is the silicosis. This is the whole lung specimen. Advanced silicosis seen in the transaction contracted, uh, upper lobe, small dark mass. If This will be your uh, OSPI slide also, silicosis. You can see a dense pleural thickening. Where is the dense pleural thickening here? Here. This is the pleura, dense pleural thickening also. Here also little bit is there. Microscopically, you will see an, a concentric spirules here. A silicotic nodule, a concentrically arranged, highlinized collagen fibers surrounding, surrounding by amorphous center. The whole appearance of the collagen fiber is quite distinctive of the silicosis. Examination shows a polarized microscope revealed and a biofringent silica particles primarily in the center of the nodules. What does it say? 
In silicosis, if you cut an onion, you will have a concentric spirules. Same like that, a patient who is suffering from silicosis in the lung specimen, if you see microscopically, you will have a concentric areas. Those concentric, the whirl pattern will due to the uh, deposition of the silica material. Okay. If you are seeing in a uh, polarized microscope, how to differentiate? Sometimes cold work and hemochromatosis, sometimes silicosis, it is little tough to uh, differentiate. For this, if you use the polarized microscope, it, it reveals an a birefringent silica particles in the sense, it is light greenish in color. That is a birefringent. Again, one more view for you, silicosis, these are all the silicotic material, because silico in the here, silicosis is almost black in color, even the cold work and is also black in color. So how to differentiate here? With the help of polarized microscope. Apart from that, this specimen shows you, and uh, high, this is a hilar lymph node. A hilar lymph node also you are seeing here at, uh, fibrotic lesions. <coughs> Apart from that, you are seeing some uh, sheets of uh, eggshell appearance you will see here. In X-ray, in uh, cold work and you are seeing a whitish layer. Fibrosis. Fibrosis, due to fibrosis. Here also it is fibrosis, what, what happened due to the silica material, this fibrosis will have an egg shell appearance. Egg shell is there, right? That kind of shell means whitish, whitish layer, that kind of shell like material you will be seeing in the x ray of the lung. Everywhere you will see. Here also whitish only, but the difference is not complete whitish. You will see like an egg shell appearance. This is a clinically have a silicosis associated with an increased susceptibility to tuberculosis here. Then uh, silicosis means susceptibility to tuberculosis Maybe in the sense. Silicosis uh, would be more susceptible to get TB. Then silicosis result in a depression of cell mediated immunity also. Okay. Then uh, crystalline silica may inhibit the ability of pulmonary macrophage to kill phagocytes mycobacteria. So thereby patient will have a cell mediated immunity. You got it? Clear? I have put up very simple slides for you. Very simple slides. I have taken very, very important slides from your basic Robbins book. You will see all the points from your basic Robbins book. Not, none of the points have been taken from other slides. Next, we will go for asbestosis. We will go for introduction pathogenesis, asbestos related diseases and clinical features. Asbestosis, those individuals who are working in uh, asbestos factory. Any doubts? No, okay. I'll, we have seen in previous slides, for silica it is quartz, here it is crystalline hydrated silicates. The individuals who are working in this factory, those, uh, the, those people who are suffering from the diseases are interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, bronchogenic carcinoma, pleural effusions, fibrous plaques, mesotheliomas, laryngeal neoplasm, this is an ocori. But these are all the confirmatory diagnosis. Okay. So what you have understood now, cold worker pneumoconiosis, silicosis or asbestosis, the end result is fibrosis. Oh, all the three will have a fibrosis. Apart from that, in asbestosis only, patient will have a carcinoma. It can progress to cancer. Yes. Pathogenesis is, there are uh, uh, two types of uh, crystalline uh, silicates are there. One is a uh, serpentine chrysotile, uh, another one is an amphibole chrysotile. How it will resemble? It will resemble as curly, flexible. This is straight and stiff. Uh, this, this is more pathogenic. Both causes fibrogenic. Both initiate uh, tumor initiator and promoter. That's why patients suffering from bronchogenic carcinoma. Uh, apart from that, apart from this, if, if the patient is uh, tobacco smoking, will have a synergistic effect. He will end up with tuberculosis and other diseases also. This is the individual who are working for the insulation. This is the pipe who are working as a plumber. Okay. Then grossly, what you have is an, uh, this is the thickened pleura and you have a uh, thickened visceral pleura here and uh, the severe interstitial diffuse fibrosis diffuse affecting the lower lobe of the lung. This is the lower lobe of the lung. In this lower lobe of the lung, you are seeing this whitish, whitish material. This is the diffuse fibrosis, okay, grossly. Microscopically, you will have in the lower lobe and fibrosis, 
this is the fibrosis area and then this is the asbestosis entire uh, lobe you can see this fibrosis so all the fibrosis diffuse here it is diffuse interstitial fibrosis asbestosis again you can see the pleural thickening over here this is the pleura this is not so classical for you, I won't keep you for the OSPE exam, but for your, because in what happens in all these cold worker, pneumoconiosis, silicosis, even the pleura also will get thickening. Okay, this picture I kept you for the thickening. Parietal pleural plaques. Asbestosis, again, you are, here you, what you are seeing is, after a period of time, this asbestosis having effect of the tumor initiator as well as tumor promoter, it will promote and it causes bronchogenic carcinoma. Here, in a pleura, it causes a mesothelioma. This is the pleural area. What you are seeing a mesothelioma. This is the lung, whole lung tissue. You are seeing a bronchogenic carcinoma. This is the pleura, outer surface. Pleura, you are seeing a plaque, parietal plaque, a pleural plaque, well circumscribed plaques, a dense collagen. It is due to, mainly due to the collagen. This is the microscopic picture. What you are seeing, this is the uh, alveoli. This is the interstitium. You are seeing is here interstitial fibrosis. This is the fibrosis. So whole thing is a pulmonary diffuse fibrosis here. In this, only in this, there is one more feature is there to classically to say it is an asbestosis. That is an asbestos body. That asbestos body is this one from here to here. Okay. This could be your OSP slide also. What is say in the sense? It is reveal a typical beading on knobbed ends. This is the uh, knob ends which having a screw like pattern and in the middle you will have a uh, beaded appearance this is the one this is the knob end this is the beaded appearance mostly it won't you will have a picture like this only microscopically if the patient is suffering from uh, asbestosis most of the times it present in this fashion only but difficult to pick it up this is so classical okay this is the beading this is the knob ends this presents as in a golden brown fusy form or beaded rods with a translucent center. Translucent center and beaded ends. Now, asbestos related. After this, what are the asbestos related? <laughs> yes. Asbestos related diseases such as will patient will have a pleural plaque, pleural efficient, bronchogenic asthma, malignant mesothelioma, laryngeal and possibly other uh, pulmonary neoplasms. Clinical features patient have a dyspnea, cough, associated with the sputum, congestive heart failure or core pulmonale, pleural plaque, both lung carcinoma and malignant mesothelioma. We have completed our restricted lung disease. We, has, we have deal with the cold worker pneumoconiosis, silicosis as well as asbestosis. asbestosis. Both what happened whenever the individual is engulfing the particle, going to the macrophage. Macrophage, we, uh, macrophage has, yeah, in having initiated these cytokines, inflammatory cytokines. This inflammatory cytokines initiates and forms the uh, fibrosis. Over a period of time, patient will have a uh, fibrosis. You only in bronchos, only in uh, asbestosis, patient will have a uh, malignancy. Upper, these two, nothing. Sometimes in silicosis, patient will have associated with the tuberculosis. It will initiate synergistic effect. Only here, tuberculosis as well as malignant mesothelioma, plural, it affects the plural also, okay? Because there will be a question in this. That's why I'm stressing you again and again about this. Any doubts you have? Shall we go for tuberculosis? Yes. Very good.